Hello, my name is Margaret. This is going to be a gigantic wrap up, so let's jump right in. This month was the Book Junkie Trials, in which we had to read 17 books. However, I only read 16 books this month because one was read at the tail end of last month. But still, I'm keeping strong for my record. Didn't quite beat it, but I'm happy. Now, this month was a roller coaster of highs and lows, goods and bads. Uh, and it started off really well with. Our Bloody Pearl by Deanne Brin. This was actually started last month, but finished at the beginning of this month, and I loved this book. It was pirates and steampunk and non-binary people and ace people and an FF romance and all of that good stuff. It revolves around a siren named Pearl who was captured by an evil pirate captain who tortured them and then saved by another pirate captain, but like they don't know if they can trust him or not and what his plans are and so it's all about them recuperating from being tortured as well as trying to decide whether or not that they're still the siren that they used to be. Loved it. I gushed about it. I'm not going to talk about it too much here because I'll probably bring it up in another one. Next up is The Mermaid Upstairs by Jamie Lilo. This was my book for uh, the weakness of my team, which was you had to read a book that was outside of your comfort zone, and I don't usually read YA contemporary. This is about a girl whose very strict lawyer mother ends up in a car accident with severe head trauma and realizes that she's a mermaid, realizes her mother is insistent that she is now Nora the Mermaid and will not listen to reason, and so our young protagonist is frantic. I was really looking forward to the seriousness of this. However, the way it was skewed made it seem less serious than it actually was, because, like, it's head trauma, it's, you know, neurological issues. However, like... I don't even remember. I think her name was Emily, the protagonist, seemed more annoyed than anything else. Ugh, my mom is embarrassing me because of her psychological trauma. Like, and it was very much skewed as, look at all these wacky things we're doing and a kind of like sitcom thing. So I was like, you know, this is actual real issues that people have faced. And it feels really, you know, light and fluffy when it should be a little bit more serious. Uh, and this wasn't the only book with this kind of premise I read this month. That wasn't planned, but we'll get to that later. Next up was my least favorite book of the month, the book that I had to force myself to get through, and that is Heritage by D.E. Morris. This was for my prompt about dragons, and there were dragons, uh, so it fit the readathon. But the rules of the readathon said that once your official small five book TBR had been set for your team, it could not be changed, and you had to finish the book to get the points for it. So I picked this one because there was dragons, there was a young queen trying to save her people, it was great. The problem is, is that this was very, very thinly veiled evangelizing to the extent where the main character, despite having grown up in a belief system with parents that believe it, she somehow doesn't know this land's version of, of Jesus called the Deliverer, and there's a literal point-for-point point retelling of the crucifixion story that takes up, like, pages and pages, and I'm like, there is no point for this to be in there other than you're low-key trying to proselytize to the reader, so I wasn't the biggest fan about it. Um, and this book in general was just very poorly written. Characters that were like royalty were doing things that royalty would never do, things that royalty would have other people do. So like, are they royalty or not? Does royalty really mean anything in this world? Just in general, like I skimmed through it, only barely reading it just to get it done. Uh, will not be continuing with the series, obviously, and just not fun. And that's where the, you have to read every book to get the points and you cannot DNF or switch to another book really got to me. I probably will be very iffy about doing readathons with that rule in the future. <laughs> Next up was the group book for the Book Junkie Trials, and that is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Obviously, this was from my library. I always get my group books from the library, and this is about a young boy who decides that he's going to go find a fallen star to woo the girl that basically turned him down. Uh, and I think, yes, it has been a movie. I have not watched the movie. The book was okay. Uh, nothing to write home about, nothing horrible. The writing style I liked. It had that kind of, um, British dry wit that I enjoy in fantasies, but, like, nothing really jumped out to me. It was a nice book. I got through it. We were done. Uh, I don't know that I can say really much more about that. Up next was one of my first books for indie review, and that was The Revenants by Mary Hallberg. This is a YA horror about a boy 
who's just finished high school summer after his senior year and he wants to go have fun with his friends one last time before going off to college. So he has his best friend, his best friend's brother, and the girl he has a crush on all go to the abandoned, like, facility, science facility that was, you know, closed down years ago. And as you can tell by the cover, does not go well. This is pretty standard, doesn't redo the genre, doesn't do anything wildly different than what you were expecting. However, it was nice and creepy. It's also fairly short. It's a novella, which I actually love horror novellas. I feel like the shorter format works for scares much better. I also did a full review on it. So if you would like to see this in more depth, I'll put it down in the description below. I did really enjoy the ending. It has one of my favorite kind of horror endings and I won't let you know what that is because spoilers. But if you're looking for a quick spooky read to get you in maybe the October feels come this fall, uh, check this one out. Up next was a totally random choice uh, for, I believe the prompt was an indulgent read. So I went with a really, really short one and I did Love Showdown, which is an Archie comic. And holy crap, are these things dated. I got this in the um, myst uh, comics mystery unbagging video that I did a, a little while back. And I'm like, oh, Archie comics, those are indulgent. And I read it and I was like, I think it was like 11 pages of story in this all put together. And it's a couple different stories. Uh, but it's all about Betty and Veronica still fighting over Archie, like really dated. <laughs> like, Oh, just show it. And this was like, this isn't from the 50s. I think this is from like the 90s or early 2000s, but it just did not go well. I remember Archie Comics being a lot different than that. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Next up was for the Book Junkie Trials prompt reread a favorite. And this is a series that I've actually been intending on rereading for a while. And I read The Capture by Catherine Lansky. Lasky. And this is the first in the Guardians of Gahul series, which I adored as a kid up through middle school. This is about uh, a series of young owls who have been stolen from their nests and taken to a strange orphanage to be trained to do something nefarious. And our young protagonist must escape and try to fight back against these evil owls. Uh, so it's a little bit like the the Warrior series. If you ever watched that, like every character in this book is an animal, owls or some other kind of bird or snakes or that kind of thing. Um, and I love this as a kid. Still had a lot of the charm. I now own most of the series. After the elementary school I work with purged most of it, so I probably will continue with this. Just tossing it in like more readathons and stuff because they're mid grade. Like I read this in a day, so it was really cute and fun. Up next was my second attempt at reading Reverse Harem, and that was Blood Match by Gina Moran. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. Uh, this was about a young girl who signs up to be matched with a vampire because her family is destitute, and when a human is matched with a vampire to be a one-on-one -on -one donor, their family is taken care of basically for the rest of their lives. So she's, in her mind, sacrificing herself for her family. However, she matches with not one, but three vampires, each of whom connected with her in a different way and it's basically her at first trying to decide which one of them is she going to pick and but because it's reverse harem she ends up being like can we just keep this going i loved this one a lot more than the last reverse harem i tried because in this one they're all three like adopted brothers not biological but like the the vampire kind of brothers where they're all sired by the same person and they're the brothers themselves are very close to each other and very understanding of the situation and so it felt more like genuine polyamory than the last reverse harem book I read and I really wanted that out of this and there's enough little bit of danger and it's cute and I mean granted it's got a little bit of the, the trashy romance aspect but that's kind of what you want from these kind of books anyway so I wasn't that upset. Uh, this is the first in a series and at some point I will probably be continuing. Uh, it's, it's, it's on my list at any rate. Up next is the series that I pretty much always read whenever a readathon suggests or has a prompt for reading the next in a series, and that is Relic of Saros by Lindsay Broker. This is book four in the Fallen Empire series, one of my favorite sci-fi series of all time. And again, it's to the point where, you know, four books in, I can't really talk too much about it without spoiling things, but it continues to be my favorite. I continue to be obsessed with it. Uh, the characters I love, the celebrity and romance might be coming to a head in this one. And I was like, oh, yes. And, and other things were being like uncovered. And I loved that. Um, so in general, still loving it. Still loving all these books. Lindsay Broker just is my favorite. <laughs> 
Up next was another of my indie review books, and that was Prince Noral. Prince Norolv, Edge of Shadows by J.T. Harris. This was, again, sent to me for review. It is a YA fantasy, in case you couldn't tell from the cover, about a prince who ends up essentially with this, like, piece of a goddess stuck inside his soul, more or less. It's a little bit confusing to explain, but he ends up with all of these extra powers and a whole bunch of people don't want to kill him. And so you're following him trying to control his powers as well as, you know, stay ahead from people who want to capture him and use him for their own ends. The ending is very bombastic and, like, cuts off out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure the next book will pick up right after this one uh, ends. I have been in talks with the author since putting up the review. Uh, I will be getting the sequel to also review, which I'm really happy because she told me that, yes, that character that I love from the first book is more featured in the next book, and I'm so happy. <laughs> Up next was the last of my indie review books and one of the most disappointing, uh, and that was Stitches by Jennifer Cluden. This is semi-autobiographical semi uh, contemporary about her life with depression and self-harm, and I was really intrigued by that. The problem with this one is, I don't know if it's writing style, I want to say it's because of the writing style and not because of, of the author, um, the main character was very unlikable, slut shaming, fat shaming, very judgmental, very much uh, every other kid is is dumb except for me. I'm not like other girls esque. Um, and I mentioned in the review, uh, which had the lowest star rating of any indie review video I've done so far, uh, that I'm hoping that it's not because of who she is, but because of the writing style, and that I would still read this if it was a nonfiction memoir, not in that kind of I'm not like other girls' voice. The ending, which was not autobiographical, was purely fiction, took a gigantic left turn and went into the realm of like what a movie thinks mental health is and what a movie thinks being mentally unwell is. And it went way off track for me. There was no reason for it to go that hard when everything before then had been as accurate a depiction of depression and self-harm as she could make it. Um, so I gave this two stars, which again is the lowest I've ever reviewed a book for its own review video. Um, but if Jennifer Cuden came out with something else that I was interested in, I probably would give it a second chance because I am still impressed that she was willing to put out her story that bluntly in a book. But it just didn't speak to me. Next up was Pomegranate by Nicole Scarano. This was a replacement for another book in my book Junkie Charles TBR because I needed to get this one read for my suggesting books, indie books to booktuber series. So I read this specifically hoping that it would be <laughs> good for Jesse from Bowties and Books because they love um, Greek mythology and dark stuff. And this is the retelling of the Hades myth, only in this case, Hades is not the brother of Zeus and Poseidon, but the immortal woman that Zeus loved turned into the god. And it is fantastic. I loved watching her go from a woman that's really only important because of who she's with to the god of death in her own right and becoming her own powerful entity and, and maybe doing some things that aren't uh, that morally upstanding. A little bit of moral grayness there, but I loved it. The only reason it wasn't a solid five stars for me was because of a decision made at the very end, which for me contradicted a little bit of what the rest of the book had stood for. So. I'm probably going to continue with this series at one point because it was right at the very end, so I'm, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt that it will be addressed and maybe even altered in the next book. Uh, but beyond that, I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it four stars. Uh, so I am really hoping that Jesse likes it. Up next, I read my book for the prompt to pick a book off your shelf at random. So I went to the uh, paperback shelf on my bookshelf and randomly closed my eyes and grabbed and I got Sing the Light by Louise Marley. This is a little bit older in case you couldn't tell from that fantastic cover from 1995 and this is about a planet where they basically have constant winter for years. They have a summer like every five years and it's only for a couple months so they basically live off of these singers called cantors that can sing and use their magic to create little like areas of light and warmth in which things can grow and people can stay warm and this revolves around one particular singer being uh, placed in the house uh, 
the what do they call it the barrican house that has a lot of politicking and dark secrets and she ends up getting swept up in all of this in her naivete and it was interesting i enjoyed it i wasn't like on the edge of my seat it was a nice easy read um this was one of the books i picked up from a used bookstore it is the first in a series I'm not sure yet if I'm going to continue only because with these kind of books, like I would have to go and research and seek it out more so than just, you know, buying the next in the ebook series. Um, but it was cute. I think I gave it three stars. Uh, so no more, no less, just what it was. Next up was a book I had really high hopes for and it didn't like, it wasn't bad, but it didn't meet those hopes. And that is The Forgotten Ones by Laura Howard. This was for the prompt to uh, read a book that had been in your TBR for forever. So I I downloaded this ebook on my Nook years ago from BookBub, uh, and so I was like, ah, oh, it's finally time to read it. It was about a young girl named Allison whose mother is schizophrenic and has to take care of her, and it's basically like revolving her entire life around how is she going to care of her mother when her grandparents die, when her father comes back, and he hasn't aged today since the picture that Allison first saw of him, and turns out there's fairies involved. And he knows how to basically restore her mother's mind, but they have to go to the, the fairyland to do it and all the kind of stuff. Uh, so this is very similar to The Mermaid Upstairs, in which it's a young female protagonist. In this case, she's in her early 20s, late teens, having to care for uh, a mentally ill mother. And again, it, for me, wasn't taken with the most seriousness that I was hoping for. And the whole idea in both stories of, oh, we can fix her, didn't, I don't know, it didn't go well for me. And like, I want, I guess I wanted a story where it's like, yeah, you have a mentally ill mother and, and, and that's just how it is. There's no magic fix. Um, but the characters were nice and, and the, the budding romance was cute. Uh, but I would have literally just probably read a budding romance between those two characters a lot all the fairy stuff because when it got hardcore fairy stuff i was like eh, i'd rather go back to the cute date from 50 pages ago it was also really short uh so i read it really quick did i read this in a day i might have but beyond that no more no less that's a lot for this month the last two books of the month show how well i don't plan because these two were like the biggest of my book junkie trials tbr and i was like oh sure i'll read these at the last of the month when i'm already exhausted back to back that's fine so first up i had eyes of god by john marco this was to fulfill the prompt of a book that intimidates you and it is nearly 800 pages and even in paperback form nearly 800 pages is still intimidating this is about two found brothers brothers that you know were born of the same people but consider themselves brothers a king and his champion going to create a, t a link of peace with another nation they've been warring with and the king there offers his daughter in marriage to cement the peace and the king immediately falls in love with the daughter uh, but turns out she's sick and only these strange amulets called the eyes of god can save her so it's the quest and other things happen like a lot of stuff happens it's a nearly 800 page book uh, the problem was, is that this book, for like the first three-fourths, was super dated. Like, there's exactly one notable female protagonist, and it's the love interest, and like, she's sick and must be saved. Like, super dated. And then, like, after that, like the last fourth, after this giant 16-year time skip, that's when I was like, oh, good. <laughs> We've got other female characters and all these other cool things, but like, it wasn't until he got to that jump that it actually got good and you had to sit through a lot of outdated fantasy tropes to get there first. Um, so in general, it felt really long, a lot longer than it would have been other ways or otherwise, just because it was so standard and so 15 years ago, which I mean, it's from 2001, so I understand. But still, when I checked this out from these bookstore, the guy that rang me up was like, oh, this is one of my favorite series. And so I was I was really hoping for some better content from this one. Up last was the book I have been putting off for forever because it's the end of the series and I was not prepared and I'm still sad it's over. And that is The Infernal Battalion by Django Wexler. This is the fifth and last book in the Shadow Campaign series, which is a flintlock fantasy series revolving around uh, both 
military campaigns with flintlock weaponry and magical demon demon possessed people you learn over the course of the story that they're probably not actually demons that the church just kind of told everyone they were um and i can't get too much into it because again this is based off of like everything everything from the first four books comes to a head in this one um i got really emotional i loved this book so much and i know i can reread and well, you can just reread it's not the same as having read it through the first time the only struggle i had is that there was a couple things I would have liked to have seen written out. It did one of those things where like it did a quick time skip and then told you an overview of everything that happened and there were certain things like no I wanted to see that happen in real time even in just like a couple hundred words. Um, but beyond that everyone ended up where I wanted them to be. Things ended well. It's adorable. The reveal that I've been waiting for was finally revealed. <sighs> I'm just really sad that it's over now. I guess the next thing is that I can focus on a new series and because I'm, I'm done with this one I can probably pick up another like really heavy fantasy series that I love. I just don't know what that one is yet because I can't nothing immediately comes to mind but I'm happy to have this done. I'm happy to have 16 books read in a month again and do not count on that <laughs> regularly. I know this is the second time this year that I've done that but pretty much gonna save that only for when there's a readathon. So maybe when the next round of the Pokemon badgeathon comes. I'll might try that again. Um, but this next month is going to be my month off, which means no readathons, just reading what I want to read or what I need to read for my channel. So it is going to be a lot of indie review books. I recently got a ton and so many of them are so interesting to me and I'm so excited to read them. I've got more coming beyond that. So be on the lookout for a lot more reviews and indie content. I'm super excited for it. But beyond that, this video has gone on for a while. Uh, I will have every video that was discussed or every video that discussed another book linked down below, reviews and such. Um, but there's just too many to go into depth that I'm sad. Anyway, with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.